folks, welcome to part two of Dumpster Dive Base Build, where I'm collecting a bunch of odds and ends and, you know, um, parts that were maybe fit for the trash but can be refurbished and we're going to try and build a bass guitar out of it, out of a, this collection of uh, unwanteds and uh, let's see how far we can get in this episode. I plan to um, show you some uh, prep work for a new paint job and stuff like, you know, filling gaps and holes and stuff because I'm going to have to sort of rescale this bass guitar as I'll explain. But anyway, let's go and get on with it. Fun times lie ahead, okay? Okay, onto the sides now, as you can see, the sides are really coming off very easily. I'm glad it's not a good paint job because it makes my life a lot easier getting the paint job off. Always remember to wipe clean on something like this, just so you can see your progress. As you can see, that's coming off very nicely. I'm using only 220 grit here to do this and I'm using also, a pencil eraser block of rubber there, rubber, rubber, uh, to, to, <laughs> sorry, to do this job, uh, rubber job. Anyway, and that way I don't gouge the wood and I can be very light with the strokes here, just to get this paint off, you know. Now. There might come a time when you're like, oh god, there's a weird angle here. Put this down. Get yourself some more 220 grit there. Tear a bit off and just do that. In fact, you might, on this shape of base, you can get away with doing this for the whole side. And you can see that this paint is just falling off, it's powdering up. Always wiping, remember, to see where you're at. See where you need to attack next. And just gently, do not push. Let the paper do the work. Do not push it. Especially around these bits. If you gouge a piece of a wood out of the contours here, it's going to be uh, an MF to... Uh, to fix up so just be just be patient be very careful with it just treat it like it was um well let's not go there so yeah you know what i mean though now if i get to a point here with this i'm going to just wipe this then run my finger across it and if i'm seeing white I know I'm down to either wood or filler that was there previously and I'm going to leave it. I'll leave it right there. The rest of the stuff I can get out with, uh, with some sort of paint thinner. Again, I'm going fast here, but I'm barely, barely putting any pressure on it, you know. Especially around the tip here. God, everything sounds, look, it, it, everything sounds so crude, it's not crude, it's, it's art, okay? Right, anyway, so that's my excuse, and we'll go down here and just get all this off, so rather than have you watch me sand all the edges here, I'll come back when all this is done, and then we'll show you the next step. Okay, awesome. Okay, that's nearly all this finish taken off. So the dust and stuff in the pickup cavities, the neck cavity, I'm not gonna bother uh, extracting that stuff. That just gets blowed out with uh, compressed air. As you can see in the grain there that was low lying, there is still some paint. That's okay. I'm going to try and get this down to 320 grit now. I used 220 to take the paint off. That's how 
kind of crappy the paint was and uh, there you go looks fine I will get it down now to 320 first of all using a, a random orbital sander with some 320 grit paper there and then to do the, the, the sides and the edges I'll use some of this stuff some of the 3M220 uh, 320 sorry 320 extra fine 320P uh, pro grade sandpaper always important and um, we'll go around and do that by hand then after that once it's cleaned up I'll use some denatured alcohol to clean up the surface let it dry and then we'll get some of this on it uh, crystal lac water based sanding sealer awesome stuff this and it's fast drying as well but I'm going to uh, be coating each side separately I'm not going to put, bother putting this on a stick and doing the whole body. I'm just going to take my time with it. We'll get this on. And then after that, I will choose, after the sanding sealer is buffed down, I will choose what sort of uh, grain filler to use on it. Now, depending on which, I could use anything really to fill grain. Uh, I might even use a... A uh, water-based uh, wipe on poly uh, to fill the grain because you can wipe it on with uh, a high grit sandpaper and it creates a slurry which goes right into the pores I mean it's actually probably the one of the most protective and level coats you can get uh, level surfaces you can get by using a water-based poly so I think I'm gonna go that route but we'll see anyway let's get this sanded down to 320 first What's going on? Well, because this is a blank uh, headstock, I just wanted to size up where I want the tuning heads to go on the headstock. And what I did was I've got some nice uh, thin gauge wire here, and I just painters taped the wire to the headstock, make sure the nuts kind of central. <coughs> and I'm going to sort of mark where I want the tuning uh, machines to go now that will give me the amount of wood I can take off for the headstock so usually you have them kind of like that a bit and, and sort of that with this sort of style they fan out slightly I'm going to try and make it as least fanned out as possible and I'm probably going to have one here for the E here for the A Maybe up a bit further than that. Here for the D and then for the G maybe here a bit. So I've got a little bit length of string at the end there to do some, you know, vibrato work behind the nut. So just to show you that before we get on with the body. So I'm just gonna keep that aside for now and we'll continue on with the body. Awesome. So as I mentioned before, we have a a hole and a little disc shaped hole drilled here. Man, I managed to get this out with uh, the paint off this with xylene, which is a highly dangerous chemical. Use this with gloves, please, if you're gonna use it. But that just melted the paint right out of there. Uh, it's very powerful. Don't get it on your hands, anything. So that's if you can get it in your country. You can get it here at major hardware stores. I know some countries who won't even sell it. It's, it's dangerous. Be careful when you use it. Anyway, so how are we going to fill this? Well, we could use an epoxy resin to do it. But I much rather prefer to uh, sort of balance the density of the actual wood. It won't be exact. But what I like to do is take some of the sawdust that I've collected from uh, doing the, the surface here. This is now down to 320. So this stuff I'm going to use and I'm also going to use this tight bond ultra glue, wood glue, and I'm going to make a paste up uh, using these uh, shavings. Let's see if I can get this damn nozzle clear. Damn. Damn. That usually just peels off. There you go. Okay, so we're going to mix in some of this 
pipe bond ultra you shouldn't really work on top of the of the piece like I'm doing here that was just ultra careful there take a popsicle stick and we're gonna blend that in until we get a paste now that's a bit crumbly still so let me take this aside I don't want to damage the workpiece a little bit more glue in there and of course it'll start setting very quickly now because it's got a large surface area to work with because this is just sawdust basically just dust basically and we'll get that mixed up like so and then what we'll do is we're going to smear some in there like so and fill the hole okay once she doesn't come back out again it likes to do that sometimes it doesn't matter how high this sits as long as you're pushing it in there because it's going to get sanded flat again and the good thing about this as well is like I said it's matching the, the density of the wood somewhat a bit more just pile it on top you're going to be sanding it off anyway and of course it's going to get painted as well not too much but just enough to cover it off and we'll let that set within an hour or so that'll be set enough that we can go ahead and start working on the rest of the body again and I'm just going to actually one minute be right back trick so it's starting to set now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a blade here and clean this excess off so I'm, you know I'm not creating extra work for myself there you go okay and there you go well, like I said, it's going to get painted anyway, so you're not going to see it, but it's going to be absolutely flush with the body once that sets, and it's going to be it's set very hard. There we go. Make sure that's in there. There we go. Awesome. Okay. Uh, we're all down to. Sorry about that. That's kind of freaky. Uh, yeah, we're all down to like 320 grit here everywhere except for this nodule remember we filled it with our glue and uh, sanding dust aperitif yeah well let's test it out i have sanded it down a little bit and there's a good uh, technique you can use this is 320 grit sandpaper i'm using okay 320 you're going to start gently sanding as you can see there is glue still there surrounding it so I'm not down to the level yet and I can feel it's still raised this is a good way to test if it's going to be flat or not as I very gently sand there you're going to see white regions appear in the fill what does that mean? well that, that's low regions in the fill okay they're low because the sanding dust is falling into the pit yeah okay so wipe that away again when you feel no it's not level yet it's still raised and you can do that of course to, to find how level something is you can take maybe like a, a feeler gauge or something like that and go over and you'll feel a dip 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 as you go don't just trust your fingers use all instrumentation at your command <laughs> so keep going keep going and I see it filling up and I see the surroundings disappear now this means we're close to being level on this just be careful to rub near this vicinity you don't want to make trenches going here and you can angle it a little bit 
but I wouldn't recommend it. Keep it flat, keep the, the strokes very short. Okay? Alright. Let's wipe that away. Feel that still not level. So this might be good. But you see I've still got white in there, which means the sand sanding uh particles of wood going in going into this pit here. This may be a pit and I might have to fill that again. That's the thing. But that's the trick. You keep doing that, you see that again? I'm just gonna get a slightly more aggressive with this. Just to show. It is a dumpster dive build after all. You know. I do want it to be freaking perfect though. See, that's nearly level. That isn't level. This is nearly level. I'll take my heel of gauge again and go across it. Uh, it's still sticking, so it's not quite level. But I have a feeling that I'm going to have to fill there and there again. But, you know, you have to get this right before the sand and sealing process and the grain filling. You, you really want the flattest surface you can get before you do this process. It's very important. And it may be, you know, that there's a wet spot in the glue, but I have given the glue enough time to cure that it will not accumulate dust like this. As you can see, I can wipe the dust out. So it's not sticking to the glue, and that's nearly, that's nearly level. There's a low spot there. That has to be filled. Has to be filled. The thing is, uh, with this repair, what's happened, because there's a hole going down at the cavity there, some of the compound has run into this hole and drained the pool here of uh, solution. So, now this is all nice and hard and set and you can see now I'm just getting clear dust and that is totally level now I would guarantee it let me see if I can prove that yeah that's completely level now and there's still whiteness in there so I'm going to have to touch that up the filler, leave it overnight and come back to it. But there we are. So that's how to really repair a huge divot in something like this. If you're going to paint it, if it's natural wood, you have to do other things. If you can at all, actually. Actually, I'm not quite down there yet. I can see by just scraping with a feeler gauge that I'm not quite down. But yeah, it's still going to be filled again. So. Hope that helped you out somewhat into, you know, trying to fill huge gouges of wood. But remember, this is just a paint grade. You really can't do this on a natural wood. It just wouldn't look correct. You'd have to manufacture plugs that match the grain and stuff like that. It's very hard to do. Okay? Cool. That's all the time we've got for part two. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. I certainly did. In fact, you learn something every day, don't you? It's just quite remar remarkable. Uh, anyway, yes indeed. So part three, hopefully I'll get to the point where we're going to be uh, cutting out the headstock uh, shape and um, doing a bit of sand and sealing on the on the body getting everything prepared um also we'll be cutting the holes for the tuning pegs and headstock i hope and uh, we'll see how that goes so if you're enjoying this series um and haven't subscribed to the channel yet please consider doing so really helps me out give me a thumbs up and uh, ring that bell for notification of any further uploads i'll be doing in the future until then Stay safe, be good, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching, folks. Cheers. Bye-bye.